chapter and the first verse and then we will go skip page over and we'll read the seventh verse that first verse says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me I just slip the page over and over in the 27th verse it says peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled Neither let it be afraid. Let me take a seat. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in God's sight, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray, dear God, that your folks focus on you and not me, and that they take in your words, not my words, and that this message be accepted in the spirit in which it is given, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Church, say amen. 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 So the bear is not playing the game, so I can preach for a while. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Actually, no football, right? What do we do on Sunday with no football? How about that? And I'm not going to be long, I promise you. F give me 15 minutes and you'll be on your way. Is that okay? We're, we're going to start a new series today, and I tagged this message, Presentation of Peace. And this is going to be a two-week series. Next week, we'll have Pastor Tim come in, and so then I'm going to finish it up the following week, okay? We're going to be two weeks on this one here. Pastor Tim just texted me a few minutes ago, and uh, he said to ask you guys to pray for him. He says, he says, Pastor, I'm preaching a little country church down in Tennessee this morning. He said, pray for me this morning. So we're going to lift him up in prayer this morning. I know he's going to do a great job. I was laughing with the um, arts team in the back. I said, we'll pray for them that he goes long this morning. <laughs> Expectations. As we begin 2017, we are looking at this year with great expectations. And I believe that we can live 
and have expectations for what God is going to do for us this year. We're starting this new series called Expectations. And in that text, John, that 14th chapter, that first verse says, do not let your heart be troubled. Jesus tells us not to let our hearts be troubled. Trouble. It's a choice. You can choose to let your heart be troubled, or you can choose not to. Just like there's a heaven, and there's a, you can say hell in church. Hell. Maybe we don't say it enough in church, right? Okay. Now, do not let worry, fear, have a hold on you. Do not let worry, fear, have a grip on you. Sometimes when something gets a grip on you, it holds so tight, it won't let go. Huh? Amen. Amen. Worry and fear, they're cousins. They belong to the same extended family. You ever heard that expression, birds of a feather? So if you mess with mess, it's likely you will be a bunch of mess. mess. Just let me explain something. If you're here for the first time, we're going to keep it 100 here, okay? All right. Birds of a feather flock together. So worry and fear are cousins. Worry is something that may happen. Fear is it's happening now. But Jesus gives us peace in that 27th verse here. He says, peace I leave with you. Peace is a gift. You can't earn it. Most of the time we don't, well, should I say, all the times we don't deserve it. But it's a gift. And it, it, it's given on the merit of the person giving the gift not to receive it. Peace is not uh, something you have earned, but something you have been given by Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, thank you, Jesus. Peace of mind and heart. Jesus defines the peace he gives. It is a peace uh, in the inside that governs the outside. And when we are rest in the fact that Jesus and his finished work on the cross has made us right with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Made us right with God. There, there, there's a divine rest and peace that comes. Peace comes when we uh, Stop trying to and start trusting Jesus. You ever anybody say, I'm trying to trust Jesus? How do you try to trust Jesus? How do you try to trust the man that created it all? The man that says, I know you from birth. I, I, I know you before you was even conceived. I know every strand of hair on your head. How do you start to try to trust him? The man that says that, that I can heal pain, that I made the lame walk, I made the blind see. How do you start to try I don't understand that, Darren. Do you? How do you try to, to, to try to start trusting Jesus? Huh? Can, can, can you wrap your mind around that? that uh, I'm going to try to start to trust Jesus. But if we want to get through this worry, if we want to get through uh, uh, this fear, what we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to trust Jesus. Huh? We have to, in order to have that, you got to have a relationship with Jesus. And you got to be in fellowship uh, with, with the Jesus. And, and, and peace comes when you, when you trust Him. Peace is a person in the 
more we focus on the person, Jesus, the more peace we will have in our relationship. The more you focus on the person, Jesus, the more peace you will have in that relationship at home. Amen. The more you focus on the person, Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, the more peace you're going to have with that relationship with your son and your daughter. The more you focus on the person, Jesus, the better relationship you're going to have on your job and that person sitting in the cubicle next to you. That y'all can't stand each other. See, the world cannot give you peace. Peace is not found in a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> Peace ain't found in a pill bottle. Mr. Walgreens can't give it to you. Peace is not found in a bottle of Hennessy or Jack Daniels. Huh? Peace is not found in smoking them trees, and that's weed if you didn't know. <laughs> so we're going to keep it one line. You might have tranquility, and you might feel good for a few minutes, but that ain't peace. Huh? The peace that you have, that you need, is only found in Jesus. Amen. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, his peace, his peace, the world cannot give you. The world can't give it to you. The world bases peace it's based on resources. While God's peace is based on relationship and fellowship. And, 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 and to be right with God, uh, God means to enjoy the peace of God. In order to enjoy the peace of God, when you are enjoying God's peace uh, uh, and that joy, there's no contentment. Amen? The world depends on uh, personal ability, but we depend on who we are in Christ. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I know I'm a child of God. And, and, and as you just print that on my forehead. And so when you know who you are in Jesus, and then it's not hard to find that peace because I know where my peace comes from. I know where my joy comes from. Amen? Amen. 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 We work for it, we hope for it, and, and, but, but peace is, it is not uh, something that we can just uh, just go to the store and buy. The peace is given to us by Jesus, and the only way we're going to have that peace, the only way we're going to have peace, is that you believe in Christ and you have it through your faith. You can only fully trust and have confidence in Jesus. The world cannot give peace to you, but it tries to take it away. It tries to take that's why the divorce court is just so full. I mean, the docket is just bagged up because the world don't want you to be a kingdom family. They don't want you to have a kingdom man and a kingdom woman. They want you to be separated. They want your kids to be fatherless and motherless. That's why they they want they want you to watch all the stuff with the drugs and the sex and all the stuff going on because they want you to separate. They don't want you to be together. Amen. I'm just gonna say something to you, me and the family, just as strong as you are. Amen, men. The family is as strong as you are. I had a brother ask me the other day, he says, why well, I can't get my wife to do nothing I ask her? Jesus probably asked the same question. Why he can't get you to do nothing that he asked you? Look in the mirror to see. Lord Jesus, did I ask her? And she said, no. And Jesus said, won't you follow me? Why don't you be that man that I want you to be? Be that strong, strong kingdom man. See, that's why I have this kingdom man uh, um, small group. I want to build a church so strong on being a kingdom man. Amen. Because once you're a kingdom man, you love Jesus. My daddy always told me this, and he says, he says, you be a man that loves Jesus and love your wife, and you'll be a good man. Amen. And he always told my sister, he said, you find a man that loves Jesus and loves his mama. 
feel my wife say that, but she knows I love my mom. <laughs> and I definitely love my wife. See, the world is trying to destroy the strong family. The world is trying to take the man out of the family because once the world takes the man out of the family, the world has control. But let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. Prayer changes things. Everybody should shout it, amen. amen. Everybody should shout it, amen. The world, uh, prayer changes things. All kind of things. The world, the prayer can change. And look at you, look at your Bible there, and, and, and look at the uh, in Philippians, the uh, fourth chapter, and the sixth and seventh verse. It says, "Be anxious for nothing, and let the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus." Prayer promotes peace. Yes, it does. And you have a choice so, to either worry or pray. I know you've heard that song. Don't worry, be happy. There is no happiness without Jesus. There's no happiness without Jesus. We are told not to worry. And then we have the power of choice. Worry is paying interest on tomorrow's problems, huh? And, and, and you can't worry and pray at the same time. Have you ever seen anybody, well, have you ever tried to worry about something and pray about it at the same time? How does how, 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 how that work? I don't know how that work. How do you pray and worry? At the same time, worry is a result of you looking at yourself and, and your ability. Worry is a result of you focusing on the wrong thing. But if you focus on Jesus, even if you have those problems and have no worry, but put the worry behind you, put Jesus in front of you. Just like this week alone. I, I started writing this message. Then I found myself slapping myself in the face, riding down the street, and Jesus was talking to me. I'm worried about a business transaction that I'm working on, and, and it's things just wasn't so going right. Not the way I wanted to go, okay, because I want to be in control, and I think I got it, and, I think, and I'm worried about it, and I'm worried about it. And then and, and I got in the car, put the message down, and started going down the street. And my phone rang. It was Pastor Jim. And I stopped talking to him about it. Then he started praying, and I looked at, started closing my eyes. I said, Wait, I can't close my eyes, I'm driving. <laughs> but prayer changes things. And in the midst of that prayer, God just like he just slapped me right across my forehead. He said, Why are you worried about this situation? I'm the one that's in control. Huh? He said, you're praying over it already. And you gave it to me, but you're continuing to worry about it. Leave it alone. I ain't got to the point where I said, I don't want to do, I don't, I don't do the deal. I'm done. I'm tired. I have had enough. And Jesus said, no, I haven't. You keep pushing. You keep pushing. You just keep pushing and pushing in the name of Jesus. Not because of you. You can't do it. You just keep pushing and put me out front. Next day, oh, boy, look at that. It got so bad I didn't want to open up email when it came. I see it was from us over there. Do I have to read it? Oh, I was having a tag, text. Oh, God, I don't God, so open that email. Open it up. You've been approved. That's giving God the glory. And we have to do that. Now, now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And then 
and you know, we, we literally have to just totally just give it to Him. And, and as in prayer produces things. And, and the more you pray, the more things will happen. It goes beyond your understanding and expectation. You will literally experience a supernatural peace in guarding your heart and your mind. And, 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 and I know somebody says, hey, guarding your mind from what? The enemy and the fear of worry and stress. And we have to do is we have to refocus. We have to refocus on your provider and not your problem. When you put the problem in front of the provider, it can't be solved. Because we got it back. Let's put the provider in front of the problem. And look at what Jesus says. And see, Jesus plants. He plants, he plants seeds, and he's planted seeds of peace. And you look at the book of John in the 20th chapter, 19 to 21st. He said, in the same day in the evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he said, when he had said this, he showed them his hands, the moles, and his side, where he was speared. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. We're not supposed to worry. We're not supposed to have fear. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're going through in your life. And it, it might seem like it's tough right now. And it might seem like you don't know how you're going to get through it. But I promise you, and I can promise you this because my boss says so. You know what I'm saying? And his name is Jesus. And he said, if you put, give your problem to me, put it out, me out front, and let me fight your battle for you, all things are possible. Amen? <laughs> Jesus the giver. He's a giver of peace. He paved the way. And the first peace is the peace with God. Based on his finished work on the cross, he paid the price. The second peace is a peace of God that comes from his presence. Keep him out front. Keep him out front. Keep him out front. He will speak peace into your hearts and into your lives. There's no locked doors that can't hold Jesus on. There's no fences that can keep Jesus away from you. This world today, in order for us to have peace, in order for you to have peace in your mind and in your heart, we need Jesus. Let's bow our hands in prayer. Except your gracious Father, Lord, we, we come this morning and we come as humble as we know how. And I just want to thank you for thank you for all that you do. Seeing and unseen in our lives, Lord. We just pray right now, Lord, that someone that's sitting in this room that don't know Jesus might be going through some things, don't know how to handle them. They can give it to you. You said in your word that you are bird and bear, that you made the ultimate sacrifice for us, Lord. I want to thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.